Well, here I am. I haven't been called up to fix St Peter's laser machine just yet. Um, several people have asked, what's going on in my life? Because I haven't been delivering any videos. Hey, look, this is not a soap series. You get what you get. But I do need to give you guys a little bit of an explanation. Um, first of all, I started off with my um, lens series. And at the moment, I've had to put that on hold because although I'm supposed to be retired, I'm up to my eyeballs in work that's being paid for by somebody else. Now, why should I complain? That's lots of spending money for my holiday. Many people are worried about this thing in the UK called Brexit. Now, if you're from foreign parts and you don't know what Brexit is, just Google it. You'll find that it's been part of our life for the last two years and it's coming to a head at the end of this month, March in 2019. Now, as part of my pre-retirement career, I was designing and manufacturing lots of bits and pieces for government test laboratories to do with agriculture. Now, Brexit means that um, those departments are now going into panic mode to get equipment in place for the end of March. And the company that I designed all this equipment for is putting a lot of pressure on me to deliver. So for the last five weeks, um, I've been up to my eyeballs and not had really much time to play with these lovely machines. So one of the things that jumped into my lenses investigation was this burnt out wreck of a machine that you see in the background here. Now that at the moment is consuming valuable floor space and volume in my workshop here along with all the other bits and pieces that I'm working on. So I've got to get rid of that. I'm then off on a break to Florida for a week. So I'm not going to get a lot more time to play with my lovely machines here for probably another two or three weeks. So you may have noticed a missing video number. Well, that's reserved for my lenses part two. Now there may be a part three, part four, part five and part X. Who knows? Depends how big the subject becomes when I start digging into it further. So the missing video in the series will be completed when I get back off of my break. But in the meantime, we're going to carry on with the series with a video that is already in the can. And so I'm going to hand you over to my cardboard clone to carry on. Welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Today we're going to create something that I showed you a few sessions ago, but for some reason or other that I can't understand, uh, people seem to absolutely love taking a picture, a photograph, and converting it into something that is a lot less, but quite close to a photograph. Now to put that onto card using my compound lens system requires that we keep the card very, very flat. And I demonstrated to you in a previous session how I've made a very simple vacuum table for holding the card absolutely flat. Today I'm going to go through a Mark II version of that vacuum table and I shall make the drawings available for you if you wish to copy it. Now it's an A4 size but there's no reason why you couldn't adapt it to A3 size as well if you've got a bigger machine. So let's push on and get the bits cut to start with and then we'll go through the assembly process in a little bit of detail. Well, here's why you certainly wouldn't want me to make a video of cutting. It's worse than watching grass grow. Um, I've got to stand here and look after the machine, but you don't have to be bored with me. So we'll cut to the chase and look at all the pieces now that they're cut out. OK, we'll come into the warm um, because my glue will go off a lot better in here than it will outside at 2 degrees C. Right, well I've just unbolted these fans, ready to swap them over, and there's a lesson to be learnt here because these have been running for several hours and all the screws that I've used to fix these in are loose. So it means that we need to make sure we put nylock nuts when we put the next set of fans in. Well I've got to try and uncrimp these wires on here now, see if I can get them out without cutting them shorter. Possibly might be able to. There we go. Oh, that was lucky. 
Now I've already put some M6 nuts into here. They were a snug fit. Look, I've just cracked the corner there because that one was a bit snugger than normal. But that won't matter because if all else fails, I can put a little bit of um, adhesive around the area there. You'll have no problem assembling this up because all the pieces are uh, almost self-assembling. You can't get them wrong because the notches are at the bottom. You'll see that there are short teeth and long teeth on here. Well, the long teeth go to the bottom because they've got to go through two layers of material. So it's, it's a virtual impossibility to assemble this up the wrong way round. So that assembly there will now snuggle on top of that one, the base plate. Now, just to make life a little easier for yourself, you might like to do this. Just put a piece of masking tape on the corners to hold it together. It'll just make it easier for gluing. Well, I think the easiest way to start gluing this together now that you've got the four corners fixed is with our little bottle of glue and we can just run a nice run of glue all the way along there. Now, what I've said to you before is make sure you lift this up off the deck somehow so that you don't glue it to whatever's underneath. And we can run all the way round with our glue down these four sides. You can see the glue going into the joint as you run along it. And it should probably even be penetrating through to this second layer underneath. So we'll just clamp it together for about 30 seconds or so. So this is now stable enough to turn over. And yet that looks good. Now just to make sure the bottom does not come off, what we'll do, we'll run some, um, we'll run some glue around each one of these tabs. Now I purposely made these tangs a little bit short so that you can put a little pool of glue in each one of these and make a little puddle in there. So I'll just hold that down for a minute just to make sure it bonds nice and snug. Now although the glue is bonded around here, it still isn't completely hard. It'll remain soft for probably half an hour or an hour before it gets really hard. So we must make sure that we can get the top on, which we'll need to click these in. And then as we can see, if we look on the edge here, because I've pulled this in with tape, it's coming just a little bit too far. So what I've got to do is just gently push it out while the glue is still soft. And make sure the top clicks on. And now we can stabilize that shape by running glue down these external edges. So at the moment we're using the top as a jig for gluing to make sure that everything finishes up nice and true. Okay and then finally we'll stand it on end and we'll put some glue into these tenons here. As I said we'll leave that to settle now for probably 20 minutes half an hour so that it's really nice and stable. Now I suppose what we could do at the same time is turn this on its back and do the same sort of thing with these tabs underneath here. Right now one of these end plates has got a hole in it so obviously that's where my cables are going to come out or go in whichever you want. Now I'm going to wire this one the opposite way round to what I did with this. With this one I brought it out as six reds and six blacks through this hole at the front here and then I split it and was able to connect it up to my transformer with two single push fittings. Now by default these cables are wired across the back here and come out through a little clamp hole. I'm going to leave them like that. So I'm going to put these two so that the cables are facing each other. And if you look on the side of the fan, you'll see that on one edge somewhere, there we go, there's an arrow which points to the airflow. And so I want the airflow downwards because I'm trying to suck the air out of this box. Now these are M4 by 60 millimeters long. 
Now they can't sunk, but it doesn't matter that they're standing up slightly because we've got feet that sit on the bottom here that lift it off the deck. And then I'll put my new fans on. And I'll put them on exactly the same way. And there's just enough room on the top there for these nylock nuts, which are self-locking. So these are anti-vibration and they won't come out. Now I can hear some people asking, why two fans? Well, it's pretty simple really. This was a suggestion that somebody else made to me and it made perfect sense. Th these fans are not very powerful, but I can almost probably double the suction on the fan by stacking them up against each other like this, so that they both work together in pulling the air through. I can just feel the nylocks biting. Well, there we go, that's all the fans screwed in there. So, next thing to do will be to sort out this um, rat's nest of wires. We've got the top layer of fans, the bottom layer of fans, so that six in this side and six in this side um, grouped together. And then I've got a single feed, which is a 24 volt feed, which comes in through this cable here. Um, the knot stops it pulling out of the hole and putting stress on this junction here. And then we've fed the cables up to the back of the unit through these sides here. And when we turn it on, certainly a huge airflow at the bottom, but we're not worried about airflow. What we're worried about is suction. Let's see. Well, that looks to be fairly efficient. Now, these fans draw about 0.15 amps each. So there's 12 of those. That's almost 2 amps. So we've got to make sure that our power supply here is capable of delivering at least 2 amps at 24 volts and this particular one says 2 amp, 2.8 amps so this is a big enough power supply to drive all these fans okay well the uh, the final part is to um, I mean I've just used a standard M6 screw there and I've just ground a little point on the end uh, just so that it doesn't wobble around when you adjust it and I've just popped a spring on it to give it some stiffness. And there we go, that's standing about half an inch off the uh, half an inch off the deck, and that should be enough. So allow the air to flow through and give us a nice vacuum table. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. One of the problems that we have with this vacuum table is when I want to engrave on this three millimeter plywood um, because it's bent all over the place if I try and put it on this way with the bend that way it's, it's just not strong enough to pull the corners down well to solve the flatness problem with a piece of plywood um, I'm using the same table with the adjusting screws on it so I can get this completely flat and level but this time instead of using vacuum what I'm doing I'm putting some screws around the outside to captivate and pull the edge down leave the curvature in the middle and pull the edges down so that now becomes a multi-purpose uh, level table for engraving well here we are this is the real me again and my cardboard clone managed to make this very successfully um yeah it's not a bad job he's almost as good as i am now what i can say to you is if you want details of this design you can go to the rd works lab forum where i post all my designs now if you don't want to go to the forum to collect the details for this i can send you the details to your email Sadly, YouTube killed their personal messaging system a few months ago, which makes it slightly more difficult for us to privately transact emails. But the solution that I've come up with works fairly well. Attach your email to a comment, and I automatically get copied to my Gmail. I will then immediately delete your comment, 
and your email address and write back to you with the data that you require. Right, well, I'm off now in a short time for my break in Florida. There's nothing wrong with my health or my sanity, so please don't worry about me. And I'll catch up with you in the next session. Bye for now.